And now we have 50 minutes of nostalgia and half an hour go back to 1941, but now not quite so far back as current car soccer stars and the more older ones take us back to soccer in the 70s. I've been lucky enough to play international football in the 90s, but I grew up watching soccer in the 70s. In the next few weeks, I'll be talking to the men who played in that era and looking back at some of the great action from the decade. This week are John Hollins, David Webb and Peter Shilton. Well, 1970 was a particularly successful year for Chelsea, winning not only the FA Cup, but also the European Cup Winners' Cup. What was it about that side that it made it so special? I think, uh, as we watch matches now, there doesn't seem to be a lot of fun in the game, and a lot of players didn't look as though they were enjoying it. I must say, the team that we had then uh, we certainly enjoyed it. I know we were labelled a good team every four weeks because we used to be sensational in the cup, but uh, not so consistent in the league. Mm. I can't remember where we were in the league at that time, David. No, we were, we were never done bad. I think we always yeah. finished in the top part of the league, but I mean, we did seem to bring something extra out in the cup. I mean, I always thought if we had a good home draw, it was always going to do all right because Stamford Bridge was a particularly hard place for other teams to play because at that time, <clears throat> you not only had the running track, you had the dog track as well. So it was a bit difficult, you know, yeah. people used to feel a long way away from the ground, so it was a very difficult sort of place to go and play at. We was very adventurous because of Dave Sexton particularly, uh, of all the teams he ever managed, I think he always played an attacking style of football. And you had the people like Johnny Hollins and Alan Hudson and Charlie Cook, and you couldn't say it was all out and out defensive midfield fellas, let alone at the back. And I think everybody had their share of scoring, and I think nearly everybody in the team scored throughout the season. Hollins has gone off on another break and Nelson's gone with him. Hollins! Good work by Hollins! Oh, against the post! Can he do it? He can! John Hollins! Oh, what a beautiful goal! But this is an indirect free kick. Hollins! Oh, a great goal by Hollins! Oh, a superb free kick by John Hollins that puts Chelsea 3-1 ahead. The highlight, of course, the FA Cup final and particular memories for yourself scoring the winning goal. Yeah, not so good for the first game. I mean, I've got an absolute terroriser against Eddie Gray at Wembley, but uh, it was nice for a team, as we were then, to be able to bounce back. And I think that was one of the good things. It, I think lots of the teams in the early 70s, uh, and right through the 70s, there were teams that always had a feeling they were going to bounce back against you. I do get a distinct feeling today with a lot of the better sides, that once they get their nose in front, they're very hard teams to, to, yeah. to score against and get back in it. Whereas in them days, you always felt right to the last minute the game could turn because teams were much more adventurous in them ways. And Gray to Giles. Gray, now to Clark. Webb going in hard and Clark beautifully getting past him and past Cook. And now Mick Jones. McCready trying to go in. And a goal by Jones. Four leads. And now Osgood. Hutchinson 
Cook. Chelsea showing a bit of style now. As Osgood goes in, a goal! Peter Osgood! And a beautiful long throw again there by Hutchinson. Jack Charlton, and it's there! And it's Webb for Chelsea! What do you remember about the winning goal? And how, how did you feel? And... Well, what I remember is he hit me on the cheek. I remember Ian Hutchinson throwing this great big long throw in, and he actually hit Jackie Charlton on the top of the head for a change. And, uh, and it just looped over, and all I saw was a load of white shirts coming at me, which was typical of Leeds at the time, headed to Kamikaze. And I just threw myself at the ball, and so I didn't head it cleanly. It actually hit me on the cheek, and it, and it went in. And the first instinct I had was to look at the referee and the linesman, which you did in them days, because when you mm. played Leeds, you always felt they were going to give them but a free kick. you thought it was a foul, didn't you? And they, I thought they fouled me. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and, and it looked in, and the referee was pointing to the middle, and we all just ran up to the middle as quick as we could to get the goal. Another success that season, the Cup Winners' Cup. Was it comfortable right the way through, or did you always feel you were going to win it? And No, I don't think we did. We. In the FA Cup, we always seemed to be going a goal behind before it actually, like the injection that made everybody liven up. And most of the times in the uh, Cup Winners' Cup, we had some easy passages through early on. Mulligan. Housman on the far side. And Osgood there as well. Turning it now for Hollins to blast it. Collins keeping that in well. Hutchinson, number two! Ian Hutchinson from Hollins Cross. Gallagher now leaving it for John Hollins. Bearing in fast with a left foot drive. Oh! From Hollins. What a shot! Ron Harris to Marvin Hinton. So much space again opening up in front of Hinton. Hutchinson playing a little one-two with Hinton! Oh, Marvin Hinton! And again, so much space to allow Marvin Hinton. Now Bantis. Oh, and number five, slipping badly for Hutchinson. A flick over the goalkeeper! Yeah, that was a guy from Nova Salon, wasn't it? Yes. Right. He said he played so well in the first game, and he kept pulling people's hair in the first game. I yes. said, we'll get you in the second game at Stamford Bridge. And he said, no, I won't play. And Julie, when he came to England, he pulled out an hour before the kick-off, knowing that there was a few people going to get a bit of retribution against him. Sensible. Yes. See Pete Shilton doing that? Well, Pete. <laughs> he doesn't do things. What was the question? <laughs> 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 He's asleep, though. <laughs> so, yeah, well, it's that entertaining, isn't it? <laughs> We're not talking about goalkeepers, are we? Peter. In 1970, you made your debut for England, of course, following Gordon Banks, not only when you took over at Leicester, but also with England. Was, was that difficult in any way? Um, not really. No, I mean, um, it may appear to have been difficult to other people, but to me, it wasn't, it wasn't that difficult. I mean, I was just concerned with really what, what I was going to do. And, um, you know, that was the only thing on my mind. I think for, the, uh, for my first England game, it was probably uh, quite difficult because it was it was just after the World Cup in Mexico, and I think that um, Sir Alf Ramsey wanted to find out who was going to be his number two goalkeeper, and so he left Gordon out of the squad um, for the first match that the season after the World Cup, and he made uh, Ray Clemens and myself the goalkeepers, and everybody thought that. Um, that he'd left Gordon out for good, you know, and I said, well, you know, he'd played so well in the World Cup, he, he shouldn't be left out. And what he did it for, really, was obviously to, to not put pressure on either myself or Ray or, or for Gordon have to, to have to sit on the bench. So, um, you know, there was pressure, really, because people thought that Gordon had been left out. Mm. But um, there again, I mean, I just concentrated on trying to play my own game and, and do the job. And you've, and you've concentrated on that ever since and 20 odd years later you're still going in the first division. How does goalkeeping then compare to now? Well it's always going to be the same basically because you are a one-off position. I mean you're part of the team but you're separate. Um, but the game has changed obviously. I think these days it's, it's played at, tried to be played at a lot quicker pace. Um, try to get from one end of the pitch to the other very quickly. 
and it's always in a lot of cases, not every side, but in a lot of cases, it's route one. And, uh, and players tend to just throw the ball into, <coughs> into the box more. Um, with that it. must put more pressure on goalkeepers, more aerial stuff than perhaps you had early in the 70s. Well, not necessarily aerial stuff. I mean, they, they bend the ball into the near post and round the back of defences without looking. And I think probably in the 70s, uh, you know, talking about a great Chelsea team, I mean, they, they actually, you know, pass the ball around to each other. There was no lobbing hopeful balls into space and chasing after it all the time and, and relying on pace and fitness. I mean, they actually passed the ball and they were great. Every player could play. And, um, I mean, there are teams like that now. I mean, Liverpool, um, Spurs are not bad. Um, teams in the first division that play that way. But there's a lot of sides that don't. And I think the game has quickened up. That's, that's probably one of the, the biggest things. And I think also set pieces are, are worked more now. There's a lot more concentration going on set pieces. And that makes it far more difficult for goalkeepers. There's a lot more bodies in and around the, uh, the penalty box. So how would you compare yourself now to then? Well, I think I personally think I'm a, I'm a lot better goalkeeper because um, you, you do learn as you, you go along. I mean, obviously at the moment I'm, I'm 41 and I'm not going to get any better. Um, but I think sort of later on in my career, in my late 30s, um, I was far better than when I made my debut for England um, because I'd, I'd, I'd experienced things and, and, um, and learnt a lot more. How about you chaps? You've seen Peter's career. How does it compare now to the early days? He's always worked hard as a goalkeeper, ever since I've known him and, and people I've known that work have always worked hard from his teens right the way through mm. to now. And it does go in good stead for any foot professional football that works hard at their, mm. at their game. And I think people will probably notice now that from when he started, I think the difference between the better goalkeepers in that time and, and, and the average goalkeepers today is that some of the average goalkeepers years ago never used to always do play five sides and never done any goalkeeping practice. And yet nowadays, I mean, a lot of the professional first division clubs at least have goalkeeping practice probably once or twice a week, where it was unheard of years ago. It was, you know, probably the kit man gave the, the goalkeeper a bit of ball work, and that was really how it started. And I think Peter's epitomised the professionalism that needs to be done as a goalkeeper. And he's carried that through, and I think that's one of the things that you look at all the clubs now. They put him up as a, as a guideline. If you can do the stuff he does, that's the way to follow. And I think that's good for, for young girls. I know my young boy, he's, he's his hero. He, he plays in goal now, and he, he loves it. When I was a young boy, he was my hero. <laughs> <laughs> More now for West Ham. Lampard doing a lot of good work down that left touch line. Now getting McDougal on his way. Robson is in the middle. If Robson can make that down. What a save again by Shilton. From Brian Robson. And a beautiful move though by West Ham. But Dougal's pass into the centre and Robson was beautifully placed for it. And so too was the unbeatable Peter Shilton. Rookie. And there's Robson beautifully placed. Oh, and a tremendous bit of football. What a piece of football. Really hitting that one! Oh, and Shilton, how did he push that one round? He seemed to be going the wrong way and somehow darted out of fist and pushed it round. Redknapp trying again to get behind that. Uh, Leicester defence has crossed it for Robson, and my goodness, how did Shilton get that one? Moore and Robson. Again, the angle wasn't right. Bonds, and a great save by Shilton. Crossed again there for Brooking, hit this time, and what a save! What a monumental save by Peter Shilton. Some people think, well, you, you, you're only the goalkeeper you are because you work hard, because you're not naturally gifted or you're not naturally fit or what have you. I mean, that, that's complete rubbish because, I mean, the only reason anybody works hard at any sport is because they want to maintain a consistency. And the reason I've always worked hard is is to cut out making silly mistakes. I mean, I think every goalkeeper is naturally gifted, but sometimes if you don't work hard, you can make silly mistakes because you, uh, everybody does make mistakes. And I think it's the same like, for example, a snooker player, Steve Davis. You know, he works very hard at his game. Um, and you see other players now working hard at the game because they realise that that gives them the consistency. It doesn't necessarily make them a better goalkeeper, but it just keeps their game razor sharp all the time. 
And that's why I've always worked hard, because I, I felt it gave me consistency and I didn't make too many bad mistakes, although everybody does make mistakes. But uh, the fallacy of that, you know, that I've only worked hard and that's the only reason I've got where I have, is, is I think, is a little bit false. Yeah, I, don't, I don't think too many people. I think everyone knows that you've got outstanding natural ability. I mean, I certainly do, and people in the game do. Um, but I think it's just people like to say that he does work hard as well. Yes, I mean, obviously... Um, See, the thing, the thing is about it is, is comparing it to what it was years ago. The I feel there's a lot of goalkeepers around <clears throat> in the early 70s would have lasted a lot longer in their careers if, in fact, they had thought about the goalkeeping side of it. You say, you, you do work, I mean, and people say that simply because you, you, you're very punishing in yourself. When you th yeah. If there's a mistake, people could see in you that you'd want to try and put it right yeah. afterwards. Whereas in my day, in the early days when we played, goalkeepers make a mistake on the side and they wouldn't think about working hard at it to stop that mistake happening yeah. again. And I think that's, that's the difference. I mean, you know, you've had a, an absolutely fantastic career. I mean, no one's knocking you. You should never even think about knocking yourself about the hard work because that, to me, is a large part of any professional footballer as opposed to just, you know, mm. that everyone has a certain ability to play in the first division for 20 odd years. It takes, mm. takes yeah. anything out of it. Take, to play 10 years in the first division yeah. is some, some mean feat. Yes. But, you know, don't take away from yourself yeah. if you've kept your fitness. I mean, you look as fit as a flea now yeah. as what you did 20 odd years ago. I think yes. that, that's the thing to look at. And there's no reason why you shouldn't still be, still be playing when you're 50. Streaking on for him. There's the ball for Osgood. And a beautiful goal. No wonder Osgood smiles and embraces Hollins because it was a lovely ball from Hollins. Do you not think the game is quicker today, Joe? Well, yeah, this is the old thing. I think it is, but when you think you're, you're turning out, you know, 75 matches, whereas now you're playing 40 ish, 50 maximum. Uh, something like that. It's it's a hell of a lot of match. I can remember Brian Talbot in that in those uh, cup times at, at Arsenal played 76 matches. I mean mm. the lad was absolutely. I mean he was he was one of the fittest men I know, but he was absolutely shattered. And the quality's got to mm. go. But uh, I think with that the wear and tear would suffer. We as individuals suffered. I've mm. had a new hip put in and suffered through just keep turning out more and more matches. You've got to have a little rest in between. Possibly that we've got it right now, the leagues are a little bit smaller. The quantity of matches that are, uh, are played are now tabled off just about right. The breather we've had is that we haven't been in Europe. When we do all start to go back into Europe, could be, uh, you know, it could be going back to the 76 mm. matches a year again, which well, would be an interesting. Point. I think it's much of it is faster. I think it's much mm. more demanding today of everybody. Yeah. I mean, it was a time you could probably play with a, a couple of full-backs that didn't have to take a lot of part in the game. But nowadays, everybody has to take mm. part, and I, I accept that it is fast. I mean, it's much more demanding in that, that respect, that people come into the game a lot quicker. I mean, the, Peter says, you know, a lot of teams play the ball forward a lot quicker. Some get the ball, and the goalkeeper counts it to and kicks it. Another time a goalie gets it, you're Liverpool and yourselves, he's throwing it. There may have been more time in the 70s, but there were still some great midfield players. Some will be for Bell. And a great goal by Bell. Oaks to Bell. Now Young. A flick in there for Bell. Magnificent goal by Colin Bell. Giles having a go and wide. Jones leaping, a back header, in goes Giles, a goal, a beautiful work goal, Jones the back header, and Giles the beautiful finishing. And now Perryman can bring it away for Tottenham. Hay is after him, but that's a good ball by Perryman, nicely into the path there of John Duncan, who's got Jones in the middle, but problems with Sparrow. Still got it across though, now can Jones turn, he's played for Perryman, yes, and Tottenham have scored! Knowles takes another corner for Tottenham. It's a deeper one this time towards Mike England. Perryman in there! And what a good goal it is! Stevie Perryman! A brilliant goal for Tottenham! And Holland to pick up Brookie. 
Oh, what a nice bit of work. What a good goal. What a good goal. That was a goal from the time it left Brooking Street. Brooking. Trying to send Collins one way, then the other. And curling one. Oh, wonderful goal. You could win one in them days, or you could draw. And as long as you play good football, people would turn up and say, I saw Gary Lineker had a good day today. That's made my day. Now, that, that isn't the same case in today. I mean, people look as a team, the winning, the result is the thing that matters so much today. And it's, it's a shame, really, but, it, but that is the name of the game. And I think that's the demand and the pressure that you boys that are still playing are put under all the time because you're the end of the line of it. I, th I, think, I think that it's a bit unfair to say the spectators probably the pressure. I think a lot of the pressure comes from, from the media. Uh, these days. The media is more intense than it was in the 70s. Uh, there's more newspapers. There's certainly more TV coverage of games. Um, for example, you know, from little thing from a goalkeeper's point of view, every weekend now, they always show the goals on a, on a, on a Sunday or, or uh, on, the, on the live match. And, you know, you can maybe make four or five really good saves in the game and, and a couple of goals go past you and everybody remembers those goals. So every week, every goalkeeper has got, has got a pressure on him that you know, any goal that goes in, no matter how well he plays, he's going to be shown. And, and a lot of fans throughout the country will only see that. But I think the fact that TV, uh, and, and now that there's so many more press and so many more papers around, that um, do look for more sensational and do actually get on campaigns to get managers and, and what have you uh, out of jobs. And that never happened in the 70s. You never got that type of thing. I mean, you used to pick a paper up and read, you know, well, we played badly or we didn't play well or that's the fifth game we lost on the trot, but it was basically about football. Mm -hmm. The 70s produced some great goal-scoring talent. So let's look back at the goal poachers. Skills aiming for Robertson, gets it on for Greenoff. That looks useful. That's a good one! What a goal! Jimmy Greenoff! That's Hudson. Good ball, Salmons. Far post is Greenoff. And that's 1-1. One, one. What a fine goal! And Clark this time is onside. McRae coming to meet him, and Clark is round him 1-1. One, one. You can't give Alan Clark chances like that as deadly a finisher as there is in the first division. Charlton, Lorimer, a good free to move. The finishing touch in by Smith and Clark. Turning in as first goes in, but in fact it was Jefferson who got it away. Oh, against the bar! Greaves, there it is! Against the bar by Boyce, and Greaves to finish it off. Turn back again, now can Hurst get up. Down he goes, Greaves, side putting it in! Jimmy Greaves gets the credit, and West Ham are level again. Which is neatly done. Which is on. Good try. Good goal. What a fine goal from John Richards. Again, reaching for Dugan across the box for Richards. Gets it down and scores. Darling and Best moving into the middle. Law inevitably. Darling leaving it for Law. shot it's there and that's what's been the great Dennis Law threat throughout this match that's it for the 70-71 season we'll be back next week with some more great soccer action from the 70s the boys are back in town the boys are back in town I see the boys